This is going to be about page 39, the version of the spook of the Stern, of uh, Max Stern's Ego and His Own, and about his beliefs in general. This is from the Dover Classics edition of the Ego and His Own. There are other editions which have very, might have different patriation because some editions uh, are very abridged, which means they cut stuff out. That's usually what it means. I know on TV it means something different, but yeah. So, and also, this is merely my interpretation of what was said. And since, especially stuff written in the 1800s, which this was, is not said very plainly and clearly, I may be misinterpreting what he says. But his big point here, and this, the section known as the spook, has to do with the distinction between existence and es essence, which is why I did the video just now about existence and essence, because what I'm about to say wouldn't make sense if you don't know what, the, what those dichotomy is all about. So, his main worry is that humanity for a long time, and in his time, which he was in the 1800s, had a habit of treating essence as more than essence. So they would say, uh, they would sort of treat essence as an existence in and of itself kind of thing, as a pure existence. Instead of just an essence, just something that humans made up through our ability to uh, abstract. So he says that uh, religion does this a lot, like really, really bad. So, um, for instance, the religion has created the idea of the soul. The soul exists in pure abstraction. The soul is, seems to, or the spirit, or the ghost, or the spook, treats humans as essence in and of themselves, which are stuck in a material body. When in reality, as Sterner and I also believe that humans don't have any pure essence in them. We are purely existence and we create essences about ourselves, but we don't exist as a pure essence. We're not a spirit or a soul stuck in a meat bag. We don't exist as a pure essence or ghost when we die. When we die, we die because there's no brain left to, you know, make a brain uh, consciousness happen. If a consciousness even exists like the way we think it does. So yeah, he, he even goes further after that and says stuff like, um, God, the ex idea of God is even another example of people making this huge mistake, not understanding the existence and essence uh, dichotomy, and they create the huge abstraction of human individuals, and then they sort of infer from that the purest, highest, super abstraction of a deity or a god which exists outside of time and space, which is a pure essence that they treat as if a as if it is an existence in itself when it doesn't exist at all. So that's a hu another example of a confusion between essence and exist and pure existence as Turner talks about. Although in terms of his whole ideology, he goes really far with this. I even have to question how far he goes with this in his huge philosophic hammer against everything in sight. I mean, there's a reason why the companion book to Max Stirner's ideology is called The Nihilistic Egoist, which if you have any interest at all in Stirner, I recommend trying to get a hold of that. Now, on the internet, that book is like a hundred something dollars, so I'd really check your public university libraries nearby, which you don't have to be a student to, to check out library books at a public library. You just have to get a public visitor card. But anyway, it's called that for a reason. That's because he sort of attacks any notion of sacredness. That he attacks the idea that any idea is sacred. Because the idea is that if you treat an essence as, a, as if it is sacred, then you are, you are doing the confusion. You're just treating it as if it's a real thing in terms of like an existence in its, of itself. As you're, you're not realizing that any idea or abstraction is just made up by people and should be subject to change the moment any evidence comes to light, which challenges it. So you should never, for instance, he thinks you should have a very, very skeptical of things like morality, justice, any kind of religion, humanism, love, anything like that. He, sh he says you should be skeptical of it, although he goes as far as being very skeptical of that there is any validity to these things at all, as they're just pure existence. 
uh, in pure essence, I should say, as they only exist in pure essence, and hence perhaps might not even have any real connection to reality. So that leads him to his nihilistic egoism, and his egoism isn't even a pure essence in and of itself, as he doesn't claim to be like a, a deity or anything. Sterner's phrase is that he sees the self as a creative nothingness out of which all values are created. Hence why his, his ego, he, the analogy that nihilistic egoist puts for Schoener's ideology is he takes the throne of the sacred or the pure essence or the re religion or of God, he dethrones all of that and then he destroys the throne. He doesn't put himself, the ego, on the throne. He completely annihilates the throne and leaves only of himself as the creative nothingness, which that term makes no sense unless you read the book, so it's difficult for me to even bring it up, as you kind of have to read a whole lot of Sterner to even get what I'm saying all the way. And I've only read this book, like, twice. You'd have to read it a couple of times, and you have to read that other book a couple of times to get it. What I'm getting at, so... I really wish I could try to explain it more, but... I have to admit that my understanding of it isn't even that clear to begin with. So I'm going to end it here, and if you have any questions, ask them in the comments.